So coming up this week on The Real Country File, I look at the rest of the fleet with Stephen. The young farmers do the tractor cab challenge at the Shropshire Show and break the record. And also Angela is at the Staffordshire Show. So lots to come up. This is it. So from the pride of the fleet to a scrapper of the fleet. So this is a Massey 1200. Why did I buy it? It was cheap. Solid. It, Solid. it was made proper. It was made even closer than the David Brown was you saw last week or the week before. Can't remember now. It's, it looks worse than it is. It's been painted with red oxide. It's been by the sea launching boats. Ah. But it's a Massey 1200. It's basically two, I think, 185 eight, Masseys bolted together. All right, okay. Huge for its day, bit of a game changer, Arctic steer, and done up to its former glory, it's worth probably five times more than I paid for it, so it's worth doing up. Newness is just worn off, that's all. It just needs a coat of looking at, a big hammer or two, and make me able to steer it one day. That'll be... but, but it's a thing of beauty. Really, and, yeah. and did you know? I do like it. Did you know this? This is solid. And that is what they call the, is it the harness you used to put on Shire horses? Oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah. The harness. Yeah, I know what you mean. And that, that because, York, it? yeah, and that's why because it looks like one of them. So that was Massey's thing is at the right? time. Yeah, I do like her. I do like her. There's some of it. character, you see. Well, Not start it up. You'll know how to start this one. Go on, jump in. Do you reckon he don't start it? We've done a review of health and safety, and uh, basically, Stephen, I'm can't a get lot. His leg up. I'm a lot older than you. I'm a lot older than you. You get in there, see if you can. I'd have thrown my leg up that far when I was your age, but no, no, right, come on. Look at his little smile. Beautiful. So moving on from the Massey, equal size wheel tractor, articulated steer, we move on to the fast track, which is four wheel steer. These were just revolutionary. I remember these coming out. All our forestry contractors, they were kind of mad keen on them. We started seeing them up motorways a lot, didn't we? They started hauling big old trailers up and down the country as well. I'm not sure what were going on red and white diesel back then in, in days. When did they come, was it? 90s? 91, 90s, I think, was the first, yeah. or 94, can't remember. Yeah. But they, they reckon that they invented the transport tractor, i.e. equal wheels, yeah. high speed, low deck. But if you actually look at the MB track. That MB, it's an MB, MB track, definitely. First yeah. off, they were fast for MB tracks. They hold timber on the roads, just the same, that kind of thing. But they, this is a thing of beauty, isn't it? And British made as well, so. Yeah, that's it. Right. That That's why it's here. It's British. Um, it's got a German transmission and a Finnish engine. All right, okay. But so apart from that, it's not, British. Not that British. And the tyres are from somewhere on continental Europe as well. I well, I would say Turkey, to be honest. Yeah, I don't, Turkey. I don't right know, there. I don't know. Trelleborg, where are Trelleborg's made? We'll find out. Google it. Google it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so really, so it, so actually, it's, it's, a, it's a subject, parts from all around Europe, uh, assembled and manufactured, then the rest of it in Britain down in Stoke, just off the M6 there. Yeah, so about an hour's drive away from us is where it's yeah. made, and the new model has just been launched. Do they all have bubble machines on? No, so the bubble machine is a fact, not a factory fit, it's an <laughs> Ollie fit, and it's for when we do the Christmas tractor run, where we uh, have it blowing bubbles, and we've even got a laser on the top, and some people also bring tractors that blow snow out. You know you get all them little extras when you're buying stuff? Bubble machine, come on, come on, JCB, get that on your optional extras, that'd be awesome. Or a slush puppy maker. Oh, that'd be even better, hot days, harvest hot days. Yeah, thought you were going to say hot dog then. No, I'm not here. I'm here today at the Staffordshire Show. It's a two-day county show and a perfect opportunity to showcase all the best things about agriculture and rural life to the general public. It's also a great chance for farmers to meet up with other farmers and catch up about what's been happening over the past few months. So let's go and have a look around the showgrounds now.
behind me the sheep shearing competition is just about to start uh, but it's not the normal kind of shearing that you would see on a modern farm this is reenacting the old skill of using blades to shear a sheep let's see how they get on timekeepers ready judges ready shearers go so here they are then, ladies and gentlemen this is the first open semi-final our top 12 will go down to the top six. We have the best of the English shearers on show. We have the best of the Welsh shearers on the show because they are all gaining points for their respective circuits to represent their countries at the World Championships, which will be held at the Royal Highland in 2023. These blade shearers this is how we used to shear sheep before the machinery came along, with the blades. A good blade shearer would be doing about 100 sheep in a day, now they're doing two to 300 in a day. We still shear sheep all over the world with the blades. Michael Churchhouse, they've pulled away from the rest of the field. Gerrach on stand number five, Michael on stand number four, but Gerrach's got a kicker. That'll allow him a couple of seconds there. That'll allow Michael Churchhouse to just catch up a little bit. And Gareth, he's found the ticklish bit. She's just having a bit of a kick and a wriggle. And Gareth, using all that experience he gained in the Falkland Islands around that hind leg. Michael Churchhouse pops the head up, gives up a little bit more control. But it's Gareth Jones now then. Out goes Gareth Jones. Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Second. The fastest time in this first heat. Uh, yeah, so I'm a beef and sheep farmer from down the road in Stafford. Um, yeah, uh, we're farming in partnership with our parents and we're running about 1,100 sheep and 150 cattle. And then we go out contract shearing throughout the year. We shear and then clears from... I'm from North Wales originally, but I moved down to Hickson to live down here and shear for Nick, yeah, full time. Uh, on and off, started when I was 16, went on British World War courses for four years and then first went to New Zealand when I was 18 um, and I've done eight seasons in New Zealand, two in Norway, uh, two in Italy and one in Norway. And Yeah, I've been started shooting when I was 17, I've done four seasons in New Zealand, six seasons in Norway and a season in Isle of Man. So, yeah. so, so tell us a bit more about what you're doing at the Sacrisha Show today. Yeah, so we're shearing at Stafford Show today. Uh, this is a competition which is on the English and Welsh circuit. Um, all of the points get accumulated together, and this year is the team selection year for the World Champs, which is happening at the Royal Highland Show next year. So it's quite a big year. Um, and also this year, we're trying to um, break this British nine-hour two-stand lamb record. So what is the record at the moment? Do you know? 1,457 from two, Wales, two championship of Wales. So yeah, it's a big chance. Yeah, lambs, yeah. Nine yeah. Oh my goodness. How many do you think you'll be able to get up to? <laughs> Hopefully 1,458. Yeah. And this um, record attempt, again, it's all in the name of charity as yeah. well. So just tell us a bit about the two charities that you're with. Well, one, DPJ Foundation, it's quite close to my house from North Wales. Well, Wales, actually. So yeah, that's what we pick them. And then yeah, we're doing the FCN, which is the Farming Community Network. Um, it's just two agricultural mental, uh, health. mental health charities that we're hoping to raise awareness and money for on the day of uh, trying to break a record attempt. Yeah. 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 We've got a we've got a Facebook page, page. which has a Just Given um, pages on. So just follow the link if you type in uh, Nick Reason, Sia Jones, two stand nine hour record attempt on okay. Facebook. She'll come up with a page. And then there's two just giving pages to the two charities on there. Spectators are more than welcome. Um, just, uh, yeah, it's on my family farm, which is here in Amerton. Uh, this postcode will take you straight there. So we'll be starting at five o'clock in the morning and finishing at five o'clock in the evening, shearing for nine hours throughout the day. So come for whenever you'd like and, yeah, come and support. It'd be greatly appreciated. On the KO machinery stand here at the show, they've got a wrapped Massey Ferguson tractor. Now, this has been specially uh, created for the Platinum Jubilee, and it's doing the rounds of the country. So I believe it's going to be ending up at the Houses of Parliament in a few months' time. I have actually asked how much it costs to buy this, 
and I believe it's over £120,000. So I think I'll just leave that out of my shopping basket for today. Welcome to Staffordshire County Show. Uh, Ray Bauer, Lower Drayton Farm. We also run Play at Lower Drayton Farm. We're a working farm with a play activity, but we think the whole farm is our show. Um, so meet the machines, meet the animals, with your trailer rides, depending what's going on. Uh, How important would you say it is to educate the public in we, farming? We think it's very, very important because they all think it just comes from the supermarket, but it's a long way before that that food is grown, produced, sold, processed, all the different processes have to happen and what things are made into, such as where do crisps come from? Potatoes, beer, barley, toast, wheat, wheat a mix, a bit obvious, wheat from wheat a mix, from wheat. Right through to oilseed rape to make oilseed and back to potatoes to grow your chips. Believe that you have school children coming on your farm. Yeah, we are, we, we are open to the public. We have school visits. Uh, we've got this trailer so our visitors day to day can come and go around the farm, whatever's going on. And Pacific for schools, if they're doing subject to school, uh, we can take them around the farm. And roughly how many people do you get in a year at all? Uh, up to 120,000 this last 12 months. But it has been a good year, I'm not complaining, because nobody else had anywhere else to go, have they? And I see pulling this trailer, we've got quite an interesting tractor here, well, actually. Well, so tell me a bit more about this tractor. So, so this is a new toy I bought for my pension. And uh, just like to say, it's a little bit bigger than Ollie's tractor. So Ollie's got one similar in his shed, but uh, not, bit, not quite as impressive, is that it, what you're saying? Yeah, but this is a bit rustier, yeah. So I'm here now, actually, with Joe on the Pickstock Telford stand. So, Joe, just give us a, an overview of what your role is within the NFU. So I, um, I was a student and young farmer ambassador um, at the National Farmers Union. Um, so just did a bit of work trying to uh, spread spread the great uh, word of, of British farming and, and, and what we do to the British public. How did you get involved in that in the first place? Um, just uh, through people I knew uh, that, that I met at Harper. They, they told me all about it and, uh, and, and, and that's sort of how I got involved. And I've, I've, uh, I've loved it really. It's been yeah. really good fun. So I know that you've been championing new entrants into farming. So how have you gone about that? What does it involve? Yeah, I mean, I think the, to get, we need to get the best people into farming um, in the next few years to, to face up to these challenges that we are facing. And, and, uh, and we're just trying to think of different ways to get, to get new people involved. And there's uh, one way that we've been looking at, which is to uh, get government to underwrite loans to help uh, bring people into farming because you know, coming into farming is a big uh, financial cost, even for even for people like myself looking to to, to sort of um, to take over. It's a big, big investment. So I'm hoping that that we can get that support from government to help bring businesses forward and, and grow businesses for young people like myself. Yeah, because ca cash in itself is the lifeblood of any business. And obviously, when you're starting out farming, there's so many assets and, and things that you need to buy to get kick started. So. So yeah, any support financially, hopefully, is going to be a, a good thing. Exactly. So it, we, let's hope we can get uh, get government on board to, to help support yeah. the next generation yeah. of farmers. So that was from Angela. Now over to Stephen, who's talked to someone about people not sticking to footpaths. Well, we're here in uh, northwest England with Richard and Paul on the sheep farm, and everything is calm in the field, the sheep, and uh, and some cows in the distance. It's a an idyllic, if you will say, kind of picture postcard countryside environment that we're in. And one of the subjects that we've had raised in the comments is about about people walking and maybe not just understanding about you know keeping the dogs on the lead and the damage that it can do what are, you, what are your thoughts on that gentlemen if you just see livestock keep them on the lead They're quite simple but we've seen the damage they can do and, and for their health as well 
uh, a cow with calf can be very dangerous. And do you have uh, much? Do you have much bother? You're near, quite near a couple of villages, and that. Do you get a lot of folk? Uh, we've, had a few, we've had a few incidents over the years, but not excessive. But uh, we had quite a lot die one, once on the outskirts of Blackpool. Uh, but the majority of the sheep drowned trying to get out of the way of the dogs, and that's where that's where most of the damage was. was. We had one three years ago at lambing time and um, someone's bull terrier. Uh, the sheep were trying to protect their little, own little lambs and he just grabbed them in the throat and killed three. Well, they're trying to look after the lambs, like trying to protect the lambs. Not good. But all in all, actually, what you're saying is most dog owners, most walkers in this part of the country, not a massive issue. No, no, no they're no, very, very, no, very, very good. good. Very good, really, yeah. They always tell us if there's a problem with the sheep or anything like that. No, really, yeah. generally very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good stuff. And I guess they're keeping an eye for fly tipping or out like that and all folk will let you know if there's out going on that shouldn't be going on oh yeah yeah hope so. yeah it's social media like people uh weekend someone messaged me uh some kids about to go into your field but he warned them off but told me through social media so that was very very good it's all good a good working relationship with that's the villages yeah, 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 yeah yeah brilliant thank you farmers across the uk have been doing numerous different things to celebrate the queen's jubilee anyway look at this with the bales it's amazing Isn't that really good? So Alice on Twitter got in touch and got that sent to us. So that's, I think that's brilliant. What did you do? Leave us, let us know in the comments. Now let's see how the young farmers got on at the Shropshire County Show with a Valtra. Hi, we're here at the Shropshire County Show on the Edwards and Farmer stand. Here we have a T174 Valtra active and we're about to do the tractor cab challenge here at the Shropshire County Show.
that's about it for this week i am on my way now to the newbie hall to the tractor fest so hopefully we'll get some some good videos and some pictures from that that you can all see next week thanks for watching thanks for everyone that sent content in. thanks to everyone that took part in today's video and um, keep watching keep subscribing see you next week Thank <laughs> you.